the first tribute tonight is so exciting for me. I left the sport in 1980 and this fellow was coming up and I'm very excited uh, of how we're doing our program tonight. And our first inductee, if you will enjoy, we have a video tribute here uh, for Billy Griggs. So are we ready to roll that? Okay, let's go. Known best as Mr. Bill, Billy Griggs was one of the most stylish racers of the late 80s and early 90s. As a top-ranked amateur, riding for CW, Mongoose, Schwinn, and Redline, Mr. Bill was known for impeccable style as well as speed. As part of the second generation of BMX Action's Terrible Tent, Griggs cruised Southern California in his thumping, tricked-out Toyota mini truck and was the envy of many a racer. During his illustrious pro career, Griggs held an average ranking of 12.7 with three top three national rankings, having made 140 AA main events throughout his pro career. And Billy is only one of a few riders to have ever made every one of his Grands mains. Following his retirement from racing, Mr. Bill worked at GT Bicycles in the R&D shop where he was responsible for developing the box series frame design alongside GT namesake Gary Turner. He is also credited for bringing intense BMX frames to life and has welded up plenty of custom frames for top pro racers, including the GT frames written by Mike Day and Jill Kintner in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Currently, Griggs works by day at Razor Scooters and by night continues to build the occasional custom BG Customs made to order frame. Please stand up and join us in welcoming 2013 BMX Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Bill Billy Griggs. Hello, Cleveland. Oh, um, <clears throat> throat's a little sore and I don't know what happened. Maybe it was racing today. I thought my legs would be sore, not my throat, but... Um, There's a lot of people to thank. We only have seven minutes. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, first off, my wife loves, just lovely tonight. She's so beautiful. If you haven't seen her, you have got to see this woman. She is gorgeous. And how she puts up with me, I'll never know. <clears throat> but, you know, Racing for me was the first thing that I ever did that that I really latched on to that I was decent at. I couldn't carry a tune, so I got kicked out of the choir when I tried. Uh, you know, it wasn't much for stick and ball sports. I loved to ride my motorcycle and um, got my first motorcycle when I was three and a half years old. And uh, my dad didn't think I could ride it, but we tried. We ran around in the backyard in circles, him running behind me, holding onto the fender. and. Um, as it as it turned out, motorcycles was probably a little scary for me, and my dad, being a long haul truck driver, was on the road a lot, so I didn't get to ride as much um, as I would have liked to. Um, so we just we found BMX. It was something that I did when my dad was on the road, and and I didn't have the opportunity to ride my dirt bike. I went out and imitated everything I wanted to do on my dirt bike on my BMX bike. And uh, the neighborhood guys, um, we all got together and built jumps out of everything. And it was just, you know, it turned out to be the thing that, that was a standout thing for me. And it was great that my parents finally had something to leverage me to do good in school with. <laughs> so, um, you know, as we got going, bike shop sponsorships and racing three and four nights a week. I mean, it was it was a quick path. The Orange YMCA was full of great competition. One of those very, very competitive guys is here tonight, Brian Gass. Um, he, he had been racing for a long time when I started. And let me tell you, this guy gave me lessons that, you know, <laughs> They went with me to the last day that I raced double A pro, um, just mainly how to use elbows in the corners. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, along the way, there were a lot of guys, 
you know, r that I raced with, that I learned from. A lot of those guys are in the Hall of Fame. It's overwhelming to me that I'm in the Hall of Fame with childhood heroes and idols, competitors, and great friends. Um, there were a lot of great sponsorship opportunities for me. When I look through the history of my time in the sport, it's some of the brand names and iconic bike shops that I had opportunities to ride for, it, it shocks me when I look at the list. Um, the very first guy that grabbed a hold of me and told me that I had something special and he was gonna, he was gonna bring it out of me is here tonight. And it's a big deal to me that my first bike shop sponsor ever, Brian Skura, who did BS Bikes, is here tonight. He's done really great things in, in the industry. Um, he's worked with a lot of type, top riders. Um, and he taught me how to do the modern day gate start. Um, he would hold the gate behind the shop and really just make me go and hit it so that I wouldn't be afraid to hit the gate anymore. And you know, the starts turned into something that was a big part of my career and, and helped me again, the way Brian Gass's elbow tricks did Brian Skura's pioneering gate start really got me um, down the road. So, but you know, into the factory team days, you know, riding for CW was was the breakthrough sort of team that I got on, and and it really made a, a it gave me an opportunity to go to some big races and um, develop skills and experience and calm down at a national and, and moving on to Schwinn and Mongoose were great as an amateur and finally landing at Redline was amazing. Um, Lynn Caston, Steve Guyberson, they, they brought me in and, and gave me an opportunity to just do my best. And then, you know, when it turned into a SBS brand, Chuck Hooper was amazing to me. Um, his son's here tonight, Craig. Craig, thank you very much for your attack on social media to um, kind of helped me get here tonight, and um, that's a really big deal to me. Um, after that experience on Redline, I got this phone call after the 1990 Grands. My mom, I was living at home still, my mom came to me and she said, there's this, Bob Harrow's on the phone for you. And I went, <laughs> Bob Harrow's on the phone for me? What? Hmm, so, um, it was an awesome opportunity to, to go down and talk to Bob about riding for them and um, putting in, finishing my career with Haro. Um, it, it was the, one of the hardest things I ever did though to call Chuck Cooper and tell him, you know, this is the opportunity I've got. And we discussed it and at the end of the day, he said, you know what, that's a great opportunity you've got. You've got to go do it. And I'm still grateful to him for, for that. Um, he, he mentored me in a lot of, a lot of great ways that were beyond what a normal sponsor ship rider relationship were. Um, I still, to this day will refer to him as super duper Hooper. That's what I would say when I'd call, I'd ask, Hey, can I talk to super duper Hooper, please? So, um, anyway, uh, you know, that kind of covers the, the, the sponsorship end of things. Um, Again, I'm, I'm a very fortunate person to be here tonight. It's, it's really overwhelming. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave here right at seven minutes on the spot. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I want everyone to have a great time tonight. Drink up, Johnny. Um, <laughs> Thank you, good night. <laughs>